Good morning. Uh, let's, this is your one minute uh, warning. We'll get started promptly at 11.01. Good morning, everyone. Let's get started. Welcome to the Transportation, Warehousing, and Logistics Business Resources webinar on Tuesday, October 6, 2020. I am Maddie Merton, Vice President for Business Retention and Expansion with the Economic Development Board for Tacoma Pierce County. Thank you for joining us this morning. We have over 70 transportation, warehousing, and logistics businesses and support champions listening in on this webinar from across the South Sound. First, I'd like to thank our supporters, Pierce County, Cities of Fife, Lakewood, Puyallup, Sumner, and Tacoma, and the Minority Business Development Agency for their ongoing su support and collaboration in serving our transportation, warehousing, and logistics businesses. Businesses are the backbone of every community, and we are truly inspired by your response to this crisis. Tacoma Pierce County businesses are tough, resilient, and innovative. We are getting through this together. Second, I will be your moderator and one of the speakers. Joining us this morning is Georgette Rideburn, Business Development Manager with the Northwest Seaport Alliance, and Teresa Del Sino, Director of Business Solutions with Workforce Central. We'll each have 10 minutes and we'll have time for Q&A at the very end of the presentation. To ask a question, please type your question within the chat box function or send an email to jordan at jrankin, J-R-A-N-K-I-N, at Northwest, um, nwcportalliance.com. Again, it's jrankin at nwcportalliance.com. If you're having any technical difficulties accessing the webinar, please email Jordan as well. The webinar will be recorded and a copy of the slide deck will be available for download at the EDB website at www.edbtacomapierce.org. We will send out a follow-up email to attendees with the presentation slides as well. I would like to welcome our first speaker, Georgette Rideburn, Business Development Manager with the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Georgette, the microphone is yours. Thank you, Maddie. Um, hello, everyone. I am Georgette Rideburn, uh, Business Development Manager with the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Uh, my role within the commercial team is to focus on business development efforts relative to container cargo. So these efforts include engaging with importers and exporters using the gateway and working closely with our local warehouse and transload facilities. Our goal is to facilitate communication and share information within the supply chain to ultimately make shipping in the Pacific Northwest easier and more sustainable. So many, if not hopefully all of you um, on the call today already know that the Port of, T Port of Seattle and Tacoma um, combined their marine cargo terminals over five years ago, resulting in the creation of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. So essentially this means the Seaport Alliance is the entity managing the marine cargo terminals and the container terminals. Other business segments also fall under the Alliance, including break bulk and our auto business in Tacoma and other cargo and rail facilities on the waterway. The Seaport Alliance is the fourth largest gateway in North America when looking at container volume. So today I'm going to give a brief overview of the Seattle and Tacoma harbors and provide a few key updates on trends from a port perspective on transportation and warehousing. So before we get into further details, I wanted to share with you our terminal layouts in both Seattle and Tacoma and refresh everyone on what the port's footprint looks like. So this is an aerial shot of our terminal facilities in Seattle. We've had some recent changes to our terminals in the last year, uh, specifically to our Terminal 46, which is on the far left side of this photo or uh, the north side. Um, this terminal was previously operating as a container terminal. However, 
Uh, the ocean carriers, Maersk and MSC, have moved their services down the waterway to Terminal 18. Terminal 46 is now currently looking for a new business opportunity. So we have two container terminals currently operating in Seattle. We have our Terminal 18 and Terminal 30, which are both operated by SSA terminals. As many of you uh, may know, the Port Authority is considered a landlord port, uh, which means we do not manage the terminal operations. Instead, we lease our terminals to operators who handle the day-to-day -day operations. Terminal 18 does have on-dock rail capabilities, uh, but in Seattle, we also have several rail yards near our terminals that service the BNSF, the Union Pacific, and Northwest Container Cargo. We have a domestic terminal with service to Alaska and Hawaii at our Terminal 115. So I'd also like to point out our Terminal 5 facility, which is located on the right-hand side of this photo. This terminal is currently under construction uh, to strengthen the berth and will eventually um, have super post Panamax cranes brought in to handle the largest vessels in service. So this facility is intended to become a major container terminal and will be open for business uh, next year. So this is an aerial shot of our terminal facilities in Tacoma. So there are three international container terminals operating in Tacoma. We have our Pierce County Terminal, our Washington United Terminal, and our Husky Terminal, um, all of which have the on-dock rail capabilities. We have two domestic terminals, service to Alaska and Hawaii, at Tote and West Sitcom Terminal. So another recent change is that our East Sitcom Terminal, or sometimes it's um, also referred to as Tacoma Container Terminal, the ocean carrier Westwood has recently shifted their services to Terminal 18 in Seattle. So East Sitcom Terminal is now available for al alternate use and we are accepting proposals. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Seaport Alliance handles autos, so you'll notice several auto facilities around the Tide Flat area, and our East Blair and Blair Terminal is where brake bulk cargo is handled. So on both, <clears throat> excuse me, in both harbors, you can see our terminals are designed with on-dock rail. Seattle and Tacoma were really um, the first to have the on-dock rail capability, which means containers can be easily offloaded from vessels and go directly onto rail cars without ever leaving the terminal. Uh, this is especially useful because about 90% of import cargo coming into the PNW was moving intact by rail to the Midwest. Um, about seven to eight years ago, we started to see a shift in the cargo balance uh, from rail to more local cargo. So imports went from about 90% rail, 10% local to almost a 50-50 split. As a result of this, we are seeing more trucks in the gateway. So today we have about 3,500 truckers servicing our terminals each day. As a port, we've had to shift gears and make changes to our terminal facilities to accommodate this increase in trucks by upgrading terminal gates and reconfiguring truck queuing areas. So when we talk about an increase in local cargo, it's important to acknowledge transload cargo. This means that the containers that come in on vessels are offloaded and picked up by a truck at the terminal. The containers are then transported to a warehouse facility where they're consolidated into domestic containers. The domestic equipment is larger and thus importers can ultimately fit three international containers into two domestic. So this here is a model just kind of showing that conversion. Um, this can also result in cutting costs for equipment. Domestic containers can then be transported either by rail or truck to a final destination. So transloading adds flexibility by giving more, option, more options to shippers to take advantage of differences in truck and rail rates. It's becoming much more common to transload import cargo at the port of discharge and then direct cargo to destinations where inventory is low or to respond to a surge in demand for certain products, which is um, often seen with the growing trend in e-commerce um, and increasing speed to market. So our region has really responded to this shift in, this, uh, shift in cargo type. 
Um, and due to the growing demand for transloading in the Pacific Northwest, there are now over 100 transload warehouse facilities currently operating within 15 mile radius of our terminals. We expect to see over 10 million square feet of additional capacity to have come online in 2020. The Northwest Seaport Alliance remains engaged with the, with the local warehouse community and offers resources to shippers and supply chain stakeholders looking for facilities and warehousing options. We have a listing of facilities on our website and users can search for faci facilities based on specifics, including a facility location or whether or not the facility is rail served, what types of commodities that facility handles or what type of handling capabilities they have. So we really wanna simplify the process for pairing shippers with the facility based on the services that they need. So the Puget Sound area is the second largest distribution center hub on the West Coast and the fourth largest overall in the US. There's over 274 million square feet of active industrial warehouse space located within miles of our terminals. This slide gives you an idea of the square footage by city and where space is located relative to the ports. Uh, our real estate data indicates that rates in the Pacific Northwest are about 20 to 30% less than areas such as LA Long Beach. The graphic on the right hand side with the company logos is really just to give you an idea of some businesses currently operating distribution centers in this area. So as we talk about trends in more local cargo and really addressing the increased truck traffic associated, I wanted to highlight some of the areas that the Seaport Alliance and our terminal operators have taken action on to relieve congestion. Many of our terminals have rolled out appointment systems for truckers to make reservations to pick up imports. This gives the terminal operators a better idea of how many trucks are planning to enter their facility and they can make operational adjustments if needed. So an example of an operational adjustment may include extending their gate hours. Many times off, um, terminals will offer extra gates for higher volume days, which allows more time for truckers to access cargo. The Seaport Alliance has also worked closely with our operators to collect truck wait time data and has made this information available on our website. Truckers and shippers are now, now able to view truck turn times for each terminal and use the information for their own planning purposes. We have an operations service center that's focused on using this data to also determine how the Northwest Seaport Alliance can play a role in making improvements, whether that be through infrastructure or funding extended gates programs during peak seasons. So we continue to work on our current infrastructure improvements, including Terminal 5 in Seattle, which I had mentioned earlier, and also our Husky facility in Tacoma. Improvements at Husky include adding more queuing, terminal yard space, and upgrading to a more efficient gate process. So thank you so much for your attention and your time, and I really appreciate the opportunity to share this information. My contact information is right here, so please reach out if there's any questions or feedback that you'd like to, you'd like to share. So thank you very much. Perfect. Thanks, Georgette. Um, again, we'll hold questions until the very end. So the Economic Development Board for Tacoma Pierce County has a suite of programs and services designed to serve the business community. Our team understands the pressures owners and operators are under and the challenges they face every day. Best of all, we're here to help your business grow and expand, and in the process, strengthen communities, create jobs, and help spur economic recovery efforts across our region and Washington State. Today, I'll cover information about the EDB, transportation, warehousing, and logistic data and trends, new and existing opportunities for local businesses, and how we can help engage with your team. Since 1978, the EDB has been laser focused on recruiting new firms to Pierce County, retaining those that are here and helping them expand. We are a private 501c6 organization led by a 40 member board of directors comprised of both public and private sector leaders. We maintain and develop client relationships spanning decades. An example of our work is a successful recruitment of New Cold, an advanced coal logistics company, 
The company designs, develops, and operates high bay warehouses to store and retrieve palletized, chilled, and frozen goods. Using advanced automated racking systems, their own proprietary software system, state-of-the-art technology to serve their customers, Trident Seafood and Simplot. From initial inquiry to site selection of the former Hanson Pipe Facility on Orchard Street at Tacoma to groundbreaking and fully operation by uh, 2018, the company is a great example of our work. We specifically target four key industry clusters to help advance throughout Tacoma Pierce County. We prioritize and direct resources to support businesses within aerospace, trade logistics, technology, and healthcare. I personally meet face-to-face -face with businesses within these sectors and other sectors not listed that are existing firms and help address any concerns impacting their business. Post-COVID, most of our meetings have been done virtually or by phone, and um, all our services are, of course, confidential and free. I want to share um, information uh, from the Department of Commerce. Uh, Washington State uh, recently stood up a new economic recovery dashboard, which provides key indicators for what recovery will look like across the state. The website is www.commerce.wa.gov forward slash data dashboard.com. Currently, the state reported that taxable income at the end of Q2 for the transportation and warehousing sector is down 15% from the previous quarter. As you can see from this graph, that dip represents the start of the pandemic in early March when Governor Inslee issued the Stay Home, Stay Healthy order. The transportation sector, unlike others, is a critical infrastructure and essential business and thus remained open the entire time. Goods and services still continue to flow despite the various challenges faced by local businesses. In June, Pierce County moved to phase two of the Safe Start Washington, and we have remained in phase two since then. The opening up of, of other sectors should reveal an upward trend on this graph for the end of Q3. That data is not yet available. This dashboard also contains information for employment statistics by county, business retail sales, business income, and export volume by goods. In addition, information on consumer behavior, such as credit card spend and the time they spend outside of their homes. If your business needs help pulling any specific economic information, please reach out to me and I'm happy to provide that. As far as sector trends, um, as Georgette had noted earlier, um, industrial is the darling of Pierce, County, Pierce County's real estate asset classes. We have a strong diversified print footprint by region, sector, and customer size. This sector benefits from strong exposure to e-commerce and business to consumer. We, all, we have seen a trend of smaller last mile delivery station projects within suburban and urban areas increasing. There's obviously been a focus on keeping people safe. And we've also seen um, uh, companies uh, tightly control some of their discretionary trend uh, uh, spending such as travel, limiting travel and marketing. We've also seen um, uh, companies uh, impose hiring freezes on some of the uh, indirect functions and also uh, utilizing more of a, a temporary outsourced flexibility as far as their staffing models. And obviously, um, some of the companies have been uh, focusing on and managing their accounts receivables and AR and collections. And some of the uh, capital um, projects uh, uh, have been uh, managed uh, and systematically steered within this region. As far as EDB business support, Tacoma Pierce County welcomes investment in our businesses and our community. If you are a domestic or a foreign investor, we'd love to speak to you about the many opportunities available in any of our 22 cities and towns. If you're looking for a place to site your business or move to a new facility, we can help tailor a custom proposal to align with your specific project goals and timeline. In addition, help you navigate permitting, regulations, financing, utilities, incentives, logistics, foreign trade zone, taxes, and site selection to reduce your startup costs. In partnership with Pierce County, our site selection tool, www.investpiercecounty.com, connects prospective industries with available properties. We can help you run a site search, provide information about the properties and the communities of interest. The EDB has a vested interest in the success of your business. Our team serves as a project lead, working with you to identify opportunities to help your business grow and expand, whether it's by providing market research, helping you obtain financing and grants, or orchestrating federal, state, and local resources. If you are having challenges, which impedes your ability to grow, we would be able to bring resources to bear to prevent your facility from closing or relocating outside of our region. 
If you are a business owner considering selling, we can help introduce you to partners to help with succession planning and help develop an exit strategy. We can also help break down specific tax incentives available for a project to ensure you're capturing all of the savings. We have long-standing relationships with our partners and can engage them depending on your specific business need. You'll hear from one of our strategic partners later on during this call. Um, for us, a skilled workforce is second to none and is an essential strategy for any business success. We work with businesses and local and state educational institutions to align classroom and technical training with the needs of companies to build a strong workforce pipeline. And I'll dive briefly into sharing some of the new and existing opportunities which support uh, uh, this sector. The state offers several tax incentives for new construction of warehouse facilities that meet a minimum square footage. Businesses that build will be able to save six and a half percent on the state portion of the sales tax. In addition, if there, there is an incentive if you purchase or install material racking and handling equipment. There are utility and energy conservation incentives to our utility partners. Before you start a project or a renovation, please reach out and ask for potential rebates, which may help you save money. Should your business need consulting assistance, Washington State Department of Commerce offers Thrive for businesses with six to 99 employees. This allows you to access technical support on one to three issues facing your business. Uh, the department will subsidize and cover $1,200 towards the fee and the business pays 3,000. The state has also upgraded their export assistance program to help businesses become more attractive to outside investment. 6,000 is available for website redesign, translation in, in a foreign language, IPP protection, and more. And with that particular program, you can, you can actually apply for it every year. Um, typically, this program has been used for uh, travel expenses. Now that travel has been um, decreased, uh, the state has uh, revamped that program to help with uh, business development and things that you can do without travel. Uh, last year, the biggest need from businesses within this sector was workforce development and transportation needs for employees. Pierce County offers um, free PPE, or excuse me, free uh, van pool van share services to get your employees to work. The, BD, the EDB also hosts a webinar every Monday and Wednesday to share the latest information on the COVID response. We would encourage you to hop on at 11 a.m. and listen in. There are specific workforce and training incentives available through our partner. Workforce Central will be, will be able to highlight those during their section today. In addition, I wanted to share that Pierce County and most of our cities offer a job creation tax incentives if your business creates new jobs. And finally, there is free PPE available for local businesses through Pierce County Cares. You will need to fill out an online application to, to receive information about pickup locations in Fife. If you've already received PPE, you are eligible to go back for more until supplies run out. I'll close with this. Uh, we truly value relationships and partnerships. Our strength is the ability to convene leaders and help problem solve together. If you have a question not on this list, email or give us a call and we can point you in the right direction. For more information, please visit www.edbtacomapierce.org or call us at 253-284-5891. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce our last speaker, Teresa Delcino, Business Solutions Manager with Workforce Central. Teresa, the microphone is yours. Thanks, Patty, and good morning, everyone. Um, again, Teresa Delcino, Director of Business Solutions for Workforce Central. For those who may be unfamiliar with us, there are 12 workforce development councils in the state of Washington. We are the local conveners and managers of WorkSource, through which federally funded WIOA, or Workforce Opportunity and Innovation Act programs, are accessed. Workforce Central is the operating arm of the Workforce Development Council for Pierce County, or a quasi-governmental agency created through con a consortium between the City of Tacoma and Pierce County government. Our mission is to increase access to workforce services for job seekers, workers, and businesses. And we strive to enhance the quality of services offered by directing, coordinating, and advancing the work of the local workforce system known as WorkSource Peers. 
WorkSource Pierce is a partner of the nationwide system of American Job Centers and through agency partners, we provide a full range of assistance to job seekers and businesses under one umbrella. A review, excuse me, a review of labor market statistics for the transportation, warehousing, and logistics industry shows in the first quarter of this year, 22,300 workers were employed by Pierce County firms. This industry has been trending with a 5.6% increase annually in the last 10 years. Local employment in this sector was equal to 6.6% .6 of the county's total workforce. As data reporting lags, these are the most current numbers. However, they do represent pre-COVID-19 status. Of the top five occupations in this sector, over 26% fall into driver and operator occupations, 22% are related to logistics and warehousing. Since the pandemic, nearly 9,500 Pierce County residents in these industries have filed for unemployment. Like others, we have had to flex to remote and virtual assistance, overseeing the provision of workforce-related services to local employers. First and foremost, the services provided by Workforce Central and WorkSource Peers are taxpayer funded and require no out-of-pocket expense on your part. We continue to provide recruitment assistance to employers with workforce hiring needs. This includes posting job opportunities, advertising and promotion of opportunities directly to job seekers, as well as conducting resume reviews and candidate screening on behalf of employers. We have created a mechanism for virtual hiring events, which has become highly requested service by employers. We facilitate a webcast whereby employers present information about their company, their hiring opportunities, the roles that they need filled, and what they are seeking in an employee. We conduct outreach to job seekers and ensure access to the webinar. And we manage the resume collection and communications between employers and candidates. We have had as few as six and as many as 60 job seekers on these calls. And we are also collaborating with workforce system partners to conduct multi-employer virtual hiring fairs. Work experience programs provide wage subsidies and reimbursements to employers who choose to engage with work-based training initiatives. The goal of these programs is to improve the overall workplace skills and competencies of trainees so they can become successfully employed in the labor market. This is a potential worker resource for employers that includes a financial contribution, as well as a tool to support talent pipeline development. The day-to-day -day contact you have with trainees is the single greatest influence in their acquisition of the habits, attitudes, and skills they need to be productive, competent workers. Two programs I want to make sure you're aware of. Work Experience, or WEX as we like to call it, is a fully subsidized short-term work experience opportunity that lasts between 60 and 240 hours, and it is targeted toward entry-level workers. This is a highly supervised engagement and typically runs between six to 12 weeks in duration. On-the-job training, or OJT, offers participants an opportunity to continue developing their skills while employers benefit from a partial wage reimbursement during the training period. OJT focuses on jobs that involve new technologies, production, service, or skills for full-time positions paying minimum wage or greater. The goal is an offer of full employment with your company at the conclusion of the training period. You set the qualifications and interview and select the individual. You customize the training at your workplace and you receive 50% reimbursement of the employee's wage up to $21 per hour while in training. Both the WEX and OJT programs require a fully executed workplace agreement. This is simple process, minimal paperwork that our business solutions team can assist you with. Like our partners on this call, our team has built a significant resource bank of, and contact list that we draw on from while well, <clears throat> excuse me, counseling businesses. We support requests for labor market and wage analysis, information that helps to better understand occupational demand and sector trends, occupational wage information for competitive hiring purposes, 
and information regarding the area's available workforce by occupation. The Federal Work Opportunity Tax Credit is a tax incentive for employers who hire certain job seekers. Employers can reduce their federal business taxes by up to $2,400 for most eligible hires and up to $9,000 over two years for each qualifying TANF or public assistance recipient who is hired. The tax credit for veteran categories ranges from $2,400 to $9,600. The goal is to help these individuals become economically self-sufficient and reward employers who give them an opportunity. You can find more details about targeted populations for this tax credit on Employment Security's website. I want to touch on a few resources we coordinate with as we respond to downturns that affect our local workforce. First, the Trade Act. Trade Adjustment Assistance Reauthorization Act provides aid to workers who lose their jobs or whose hours of work and wages are reduced as a result of increased foreign competition. If you believe your business has been negatively impacted by foreign trade, you can receive assistance in completing your Trade Adjustment Assistance Petition from the Washington State Labor Council. They assist with research, certification paperwork, and can provide a letter to investigators regarding your case for certification. I've included uh, contact information for Bill Messenger and Emmanuel Flores here. In addition to career counseling and job search assistance through WorkSource, this certification provides trade impacted workers a waiver of job search requirements and or an extension of unemployment insurance benefits if enrolled in a certified training program. Additional financial support is available, such as tuition, books, supplies, financial support for relocation or transportation costs to pursue employment is also available. Spouses may also be available for dislocated worker programs if previously home, a homemaker, <clears throat> excuse me, or a dependent. Your business may benefit also from training and employee development resources. These partners in cooperation with local community and technical college conduct deep dive needs assessments in areas of training and upskilling your labor force. Performance management, lean process improvements, reopening guidance, equity, race and diversity are just a few categories. These services can be customized to your business they can be part of an industry-wide training effort, or they can be conducted through a consortium of entities. Two financial assistance programs that I'd like to call to your attention regarding training and um, employee development. <clears throat> the Job Skills Training Program offers training grants that require a one-to-one -one employer match. Often employee wages and benefits paid during the training program meet that criteria. Customized training program is a more complex loan that includes a 50% business and occupation tax credit for up to 18 months. Please feel free to contact our partners at Impact Washington and Invista Performance Solutions for additional information. For employers who are reactivating their workforce, or for employers who are looking to reduce their workforce, shared work allows you to support workers to retain part-time employment and collect unemployment benefits for lost hours. This is a program that is available through the Employment Security Department, and you can access that information at sharedworklaw.com. When a company experiences the need to downsize their workforce, whether through temporary furloughs or permanent layoffs, our business solutions team coordinates rapid response sessions with employers to inform soon to be separated employees about the unemployment claims process, what happens to their health and retirement benefits, available education and training resources for those who may wish to seek retraining, workshops and services for job search as well as labor and trade impacts and resources. Ideally, we want to facilitate these sessions prior to separation of workers so they can get a sense of what to expect and next steps. The unemployment insurance element alone has been incredibly valuable at this time, given the current complexities of our unemployment system. If your firm is faced with making these difficult decisions, please reach out to me directly at Workforce Central to coordinate and access these services. 
That concludes my portion of the presentation. I want to thank you all for your time today, and please let us know how we can be of assistance. Back to you, Maddie. Thanks, Teresa, for all of that great information. So uh, we'll now move into the Q&A portion of the webinar. Um, again, this is Maddie, and I will be moderating the Q&A. Uh, to ask a question, please type your question into the chat box, and we will respond. Maddie, I believe from one of our uh, participants, they've indicated the disabled uh, chat is disabled. So please use the okay. Q&A portion of our um, webinar, please. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Teresa. Okay, here's a question. Um, I'm hoping this PowerPoint will be distributed following our meeting. I hope you are, I see you're recording as well. So maybe the entire meeting can be shared. Yes, absolutely. The um, webinar and the recording will be available for download on, on the EDB website. And we will also be sending out a follow-up email to attendees once we conclude with the webinar today. Great. This question is for Georgette. Georgette, I have a local warehouse facility. How do I get my company added to the Northwest Seaport Alliance website and directory? That is a great question. Um, you can, if you have a local warehouse facility or transload facility, um, you're able to complete a company profile on the Northwest Seaport Alliance website. Um, so if you go to our page, there's a segment that says facilities and services. Uh, and you can find what's called the company profile and add your company information in that section. Um, then it will go to the website listing as well as another directory that we, um, that we have as well. Um, if you have any issues with uh, completing the company, company profile or um, technical issues, just questions in general, contact information is available on the website, but you can definitely reach out to, to me and we would be happy to get that information included on our website. Perfect. Thanks, Georgette. This question is for Teresa. What if our company has already laid off or furloughed workers? How can we, re how can we provide rapid response information to them? Great question. Um, I would still encourage you to contact our offices so that we can coordinate the information to your employees. It's possible that we can send that information to email addresses. Uh, we can provide a PowerPoint presentation and documentation to support work source resources, connections to unemployment, and other, other benefits that we um, discuss when we go through that rapid response process. So please feel free to reach out to us. Um, it's not too late. It's just a little more difficult to reach folks when they're already disconnected. Great, thanks Teresa. Um, next question, I think uh, either myself or Georgette, we can, I think we could help answer this. So um, when you say smaller last mile projects in urban areas, what exactly do you mean? So, um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and answer this one first. So um, uh, typically the, um, some of the fulfillment and distribution centers, um, what we're seeing now is a trend uh, towards a smaller footprint. Uh, when I say smaller, that's 500,000 square feet and below. And it's within um, suburban and urban areas for last mile delivery. So if you think about um, e-commerce uh, um, e and transportation hubs being closer to the end user, which is the um, uh, which are the residents. Uh, we're seeing more projects that are choosing to site and locate within a suburban area um, and also an, it, within an urban area uh, to get closer to that end user. And those projects, um, uh, the last mile projects have been uh, utilizing uh, uh, smaller delivery vans. They're not large delivery vans. They're uh, vans that you might see on, you, you, might, you might see a prime uh, van that comes in within eight or uh, eight miles, you know, within a location to, um, uh, from the delivery station to that end user. Okay. 
Georgette, did you want to add anything? Um, no, I think you, you covered it. Yeah, the final mile is also another um, term that's used, but I think you covered that. Okay, this question is for um, Georgette. Is transloading just for cargo, import cargo? I would say typically when we're looking at transload cargo trends, we are heavily focused on the import side. Um, that's where you're gonna see the majority of, of transloading operations. However, we are seeing um, export cargo as well. Um, our state of Washington, fortunately, has a really robust local export market. So a lot of our, our major exports are coming out of Eastern Washington. We have our potatoes and our tree fruit, apples. So a lot of those products don't really need to be transloaded. They just are loaded directly at the facilities and then come straight to the port. However, we do have exports coming from the Midwest that um, do go come by rail and they are um, come to transload facilities that are near the terminals and they're loaded into the, the shipping container. So it's the exact kind of reverse process of what, what was covered. Um, and then they get delivered to the terminals. So we do, we do see some exports. We would always like to see more export cargo, but um, I would say, yeah, typically when we're talking measuring um, transloading, we look at the imports, but it does happen on both sides. Great, thanks Georgette. This question is for um, Teresa. Um, Teresa, uh, employee development and training, are these done on site at the business location? They can be done on site. Um, and we have uh, Fred Schinemann uh, with us today who could share a little bit of additional information about how that employee training um, can be conducted. Uh, Fred, are, are you able to uh, join us in the conversation? Yes, I'm right here. Great. Do you mind adding a couple of comments about that, please? Certainly. Uh, yes, we can do the training right on site. Uh, either it depends on the kind of training. If it's something that needs to be in a classroom, if you have a space available, we can use that. Or if it's something that is a technical skill, we can be training on the floor. If it's something that you choose, um, it's all going to be custom built to your needs at your space, if that is the desire. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. And I, I don't see any more questions coming in. So if you have a question, feel free to uh, chat or, or send in a question through the chat box. Okay, well, everyone, I'm going to give you all about 15 extra minutes of your life back. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, I, I want to thank um, uh, both Teresa and Georgette for joining me this morning, um, our panelists uh, for their engagement during today's call. Um, hosting a webinar uh, takes a, quite a bit of effort, time and commitment. And we hope that you found today's um, information valuable and um, took some um, takeaways back to your organization. Uh, we want to thank our supporters, uh, Pierce County, Cities of Fife, Lakewood, Puyallup, and Sumner, and Tacoma for their support. And also thank you to the Minority Business Development Agency as well. To everyone on this call, a survey will be sent out following this webinar. Please take a couple of minutes to send in feedback. It really helps us to understand your takeaways and what we may consider offering in the future. Again, a copy of today's recording and presentation will be available for download on the EDB website at www.edbtacomapierce.org. And I see one question, hold on, I'll, I'll answer this. <laughs> Sorry about that. We currently operate in the last, uh, in the last final mile industry, uh, last final mile industry with the smaller cargo vans you speak of. Do you have any recommendations on smaller firms who could utilize our services? Any recommendations? That is a really good question. And I will say that um, uh, yeah, 
um, for this for this for this question, I'll I'll be able to reach out to you afterwards to give some suggestions on that. Again, um, a copy of today's recording and presentation will be available. Um, we want to thank everyone's uh, time and attention and really appreciate your, your um, attention this morning. Work the challenge. Uh, be good to each other. We are getting through this. This concludes the call. Thank you.